All right, everybody. Hello <laughs> and welcome to Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. Episode, episode 19. 19. Which was the average age of uh, kids in Vietnam. Yeah. Remember that song? Yeah. That was on MTV all the time. I, I think it was called 19. It was. It was, yeah, it was a weird art piece. Yeah. Not a 19. Not a 19. <laughs> song was uh, a bummer is what that song was. <laughs> a bummer and not good. You couldn't dance to it or anything. No. Nope. It's weird that it was on. Yeah. MT, that was MTV. So the old dumb joke about when they played videos. I remember MTV, blah, blah, blah. But I remember the beginning of MTV when they were just weird and it was great. It was really, they like, it was like they went on the air and had to figure it out as they went. Like no and, one told them it was starting. Yeah, and they had- Oh, uh, news for teens? We'll do that. <laughs> oh, whose idea was MTV? Do you know this bit of trivia? I don't think I do. Was it somebody weird like Sumner Redstone? Uh, no, but it is kind of weird. Uh, member of a band. Actually, we we didn't quite talk about them last week, but we almost talked about them last week. Mm -hmm. They were kind of involved in the show last week. Uh huh. The monkeys. That's right, Mike Nesmith. It was my <laughs> really. Yep, that was his idea. He had this idea. I don't think he got a dime for it because he thought. Uh, do you ever watch television parts? No. Oh, it's brilliant. It's worth looking up. And any fans of our little show, feel free to look it up. It's worth watching. It's Mike Nesmith did uh, television parts. I think he did another one called Elephant Parts, where it was just basically sketches hmm. and weird videos and uh, some very funny sketches. Like there was this, there's a sketch on there, how to speak Irish. That's really funny. <laughs> um, but he thought, uh, you know, radio is going away. There should be a there should be a sh uh, channel that's basically radio that would play music but videos. And hmm. He was right. There should be. What an interesting bird that dude was. Yes, indeed. And there still should be a sh channel like that. That's like was a good channel. <laughs> there really should. There is a market. Yeah. I think it's YouTube now. Yeah. Yeah. What that's I hear. True. I haven't. I haven't seen a music video in years. You know. I like YouTube fine. The thing is, I liked not me not curating. I like just turning it on. Ah, yeah, yeah. So YouTube yeah. fine, but I'm involved too much when I have to yeah. watch stuff. <laughs> That's true. You have to drive. Yeah. There's you can set up playlists, but then I'm like, but then I've probably already watched them because that's how they become part of a playlist. Right. And then if you let the algorithm take over, then you uh end up in queue yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that that is true that's how that happened <laughs> we are we sorry are, no. i was just gonna say we're both vaccinated by the way i was gonna say that partially we're both uh, one shot in yep so uh, do you feel better do you feel safer yet um no <laughs> yeah i'm the same yeah they keep saying like, oh, you're partly protected. And I'm like, mm, I was partly protected before by like masks and wind. Yeah. So. So because, because I work a lot of frontline stuff, I'm, I'm, I get to read a lot of stuff from the CDC that maybe a regular person wouldn't read. So I'm reasonably educated for, for somebody like myself. And one of the things that is encouraging, we both got Moderna, uh, one thing that's encouraging isn't just your chance of not getting it. The more encouraging thing is that if you get it, chances are very high now that you wouldn't get one that required anything other than it was inconvenient and you were sick for a few days. Right. So that's, I do feel better in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a nice backstop. Yeah you're less likely to have to be intubated. You're less likely to have to go to the damn hospital and all of that crap. So that's yeah. kind of good. Yeah. But we also have these weird, these cool variants going on. <laughs> the cool variants. 
Uh, yeah, I'm like, when the variant news came out, I was like, I'm out of space to worry more. Yeah, me too. I'm just like, I will listen to this information and r retain it, but I can't get more worried. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel I have a show like, to do. Huh? I have a show to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, eh, this is probably what happened to Homo habilis. They were looking around and went, oh, this too? Okay, well, I can't do nothing about that. Right. Okay. Oh, oh there's Homo sapiens too? All right. Well, okay. Well, we just handled the lack of food. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'll be in my cave painting. <laughs> <laughs> painting and making the same tool that the last thousand years we've been making. <laughs> uh not innovators they weren't innovators <laughs> no no they were they were the market they yeah. were not they were not the bleeding edge yeah they made an axe and they went well that's good forever right this shouldn't we should never need yeah. more this this cuts everything yeah. <laughs> you <ever laughs> all the it? things that i know about <laughs> have you ever seen a axe they made by the way um i'm not specifically a homo habilis that i'm aware of but maybe if you've ever seen one of those things in a in a museum, most of the time I think, isn't that just a rock? <laughs> yeah, they're very unfinished. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, you could have found that. Yeah. At the main, you should have looked around a little more. You wouldn't have had to make that axe. Yeah. <laughs> I feel <laughs> sometimes like we're being generous. I'm like, I guess that's a tool, but. <laughs> You guys yeah, there. I mean, it wasn't fucking scraping furs by itself. You had to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes it a tool. Yeah. I mean, good job. Yeah. But what if, it's funny, what if it, maybe, maybe all their really good tools just because just disintegrated and years from now, they'll find a really nice one. <laughs> oh, right. But they're, they're like better tools, but they're, of course, they're more fragile. Yeah. They didn't survive. And they like even nobody's have... gonna find YouTube in a million years. Yeah, they'll just find like chairs and shit. They'll be like, "That's it." They'll they'll find a shopping cart. They will, they will find a shopping cart. A shopping cart, and somehow they'll put together that the show Jackass existed. <laughs> well, it'll still be on. Yeah, that's true. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's this Our... show about? All right. So anyway, listen, guys. <laughs> we analyzed Billy Joel ly lyrics, and we picked. Or I picked. I should say this is not <laughs> Alex's fault. Um, I picked the song "Christy Lee," and now I will say, plead ignorance. I did not know Christy Lee was Christy Lee was Christy Brinkley's maiden name. Um, yeah, I think I did know that. I didn't. It really colors the song in a weird way, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I it's think it's not nice in the song. No, I have to imagine <laughs> because of when he wrote it, because at the time they were presumably happy, because I think it was towards the beginning of their relationship. Mm -hmm. That, and because he's being a character in the song for sure, because uh, he's not the guy or the girl. <laughs> right. He just knew the guy, which I love. Yeah, he knew the guy. Um, <laughs> So I got to imagine he used the song as just a tip of the hat to his lady. Yeah. It's like, I'm just using your name. Yeah. It's not about you. Yeah. <laughs> Why Although, are you being like this? It would be funny if that was in the papers when she was like, this is why we're not together anymore. <laughs> Everything else was fine. It's this song. But now I'm mad. <laughs> I hadn't listened to the song in a very long time. And of course, this album, An Innocent Man, is all 50s and 60s. And mm -hmm. uh, I think he pretty much nails it stylistically. It just sure. still, still feels, this one feels like a parody of the genre written if you were like, a sitcom character was like funnily remembering how they used to be in a band and this is the song he's playing. <laughs> right like yeah joey tribbiani tells us his dad was in a 50s band oh a flashback and it's his dad doing christy lee christy lee like we couldn't get the rights to a real 50s song yeah 
So we made we wrote one real fast. Because then, for sure it sounds it sounds so much like another song that it or you're watching WKRP and they're like, does the only way we could get in syndication was take the real song out and put this in. <laughs> And that's what it sounds Does it like. to you sound like a specific actual song? I mean, it uh, is an actual song, but an actual 50s song? Yeah, it kind of does. It feels very, feels very Jerry Lee Lewis to me. Yeah, that's what I heard. And But lyrically, so it sounds like two things. Musically, it sounds like Jerry Lee Lewis. Lyrically, it actually sounds more a little more early 70s, bad boy, Leroy Brown. Okay. Or yeah. One of those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, but, there were a lot of like witness songs in the 70s. Like, this didn't happen to me. Yeah. But I saw this. Yeah. I was nearby when Leroy Brown was behaving this way. Yeah. No. He didn't do it to me. <laughs> oh, but boy. Yeah. Boy, I guess. Just... Yeah, I was at my window. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the only proper 50s song I can think of that's like that is Staggerly is a little bit like that. Sure. And can you think of any other real 50 songs that were that? <laughs> that were that. I don't know. Stagger Lee is pretty close. And I mean, there's the obvious similarity uh, of Lee's being involved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm like, oh, yeah, that is kind of similar. You're right. <laughs> oh, it's late here. It's early there. Yeah. I, I did get the shot, though, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They say that uh, makes you dumb forever. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the side effects. <laughs> it would explain a lot. Yeah, man, I must have got it a while ago. <laughs> uh, are there any other? Um, I'm trying to think. It, it. I just heard Jerry Lee Lewis because, like, you know, I think we were saying we listened to it the other day, and I was like, oh, he's hurting that piano. And his and his voice. Sue was very concerned about his voice because his <laughs> this is not in his range. Yeah. Um, which I think he did that whole album. I mean, obviously, it's a '50s album, and everyone uh, was singing a lot higher. Yeah. It sounded like they were because they would speed up the records, in some cases, in the studios. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, just because they didn't, it, what they didn't intentionally speed it up, but the recording equipment was not what it is. Sometimes it would just be faster, um, which is what happened to Billy Joel's first album, Cold Spring Harbor. Oh, okay. He has told people over and over again, don't buy that one because they sped it up. He's like, I don't really sound like that. Oh, um, which is great. Speaking of sped up, I saw Jerry Lee Lewis as an old man on, it was maybe on an award show, and he's, um, playing goodness gracious great balls of fire and i was excited to kind of see it because i had never seen him play it live and i forget that he's an old man <laughs> and he i'm not even it's not much of an exaggeration to say that what he did is he goes you shake my nerves and you rattle my brain bum, 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 bum. i was like oh, <laughs> oh no oh yeah. so Three minute song played in six minutes. <laughs> oh, I love that the first line is about like neurological problems. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. I, my nerves are rattled. My brain is shaking. I lost my keys. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I come into this room? <laughs> um, Little Richard is the other person that um, we thought of. Yes. Listening to Christy Lee. It's like, oh, it's a, it's, you know. The, which is probably where Jerry Lee Lewis stole everything from. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, that seems more correct. I don't think Jerry Lee Lewis would give that much respect to a woman in a song. Right, that's true. And, oh, actually, that, and that's even fairly unique for any, any damn 50s song, I suspect. Yeah. So uh there's no uh it's worth mentioning right away because uh we mention this often there's no middle diversion in the song either right there's yeah it no, just piles on through there's no suddenly a different way of that doesn't help isn't there which is nice 
<laughs> that doesn't help. You hate a bridge. I, um, I do. Uh, I well, I don't. Uh, sometimes I do when I'm like, hey, is this a different song? Do you know yeah. what? The bridge should make sense. And, yeah. And when it doesn't, it's jarring. There are times where it's like, oh, this is just a piece of a different song that you didn't finish. Yeah. And uh, uh, and this <laughs> one, it would be very jarring because, again, like I said, I, we said it about another song on this album that does have a bridge that 50 songs didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. They were. Yeah. They were like uh, 205, maybe. Yep. And they plowed right through to the end. Yep, we're in, we're out. That's what you like about these songs if you like those songs, which right. I do. I appreciate the air for what it offers. If you watch the biopics about people recording music in the 50s, like they all just learned their instruments. <laughs> yeah. They barely knew how to sing and they all had $5 to re reserve the studio. Yeah. And they had to finish in 20 minutes or else somebody with a cigar was going to kick them out. <laughs> that's right like that's why all the songs were so short and like there's no practice or rehearsal yeah they recorded two that they wrote and a gospel song they remembered <laughs> yep and then they had to get out of there because uh that elvis boy is in town and he wants the studio <laughs> and he also, <laughs> yep that's right that is damn that's right what he wants uh there's a hell of a lot of saxophone in this song yes um it it's it's very good yep very rollicking saxophone um which makes sense because of course the, the the secondary main character i don't know is not <laughs> is a saxophone player yep that's true he plays the saxophone and he's a he's a sad sack he is yeah he, uh... <laughs> but he's not billy joel nope billy joel uh, knew him i all, all i remember is his name was joe <laughs> yeah oh and also his whole life story yeah but, <laughs> uh, but also let's clarify though i'm not sure his name is joe that's true yeah that's true. he's not super clear yeah all right so let's uh well let me tell you a story alex about a woman and a man <laughs> maybe you'll find it familiar maybe you won't understand and that's the, that's his introduction into the song uh, he's going to tell us a story about a woman and a man. Mm -hmm. I, it's pretty straightforward, pretty much drives right into it. I don't know. Does he do this in another song where he's telling you a story, but he, he tells you that he's telling you a story. Cause I like that. And I don't think he's done that before in another I song. Think of one offhand. No, he's usually just right in it. Cause he's it's talking true. to you and me. He's specifically saying, uh I, I i don't think he's used that uh device before <laughs> right i also like the uncertainty of like maybe this will be familiar to you or maybe it won't make any sense yeah and uh, i feel like this is a drunk guy at a bar bothering you you guys just met hey i'm gonna tell you i like the hey, right. i like it yeah there's no asking yeah asking sorry um i guess it is also a 50s device um we're like I'm about to tell you a story. So you go, oh, okay. Uh, these, this is not uh, directions. This is a story. <laughs> yeah. You're not telling, this is not a, a life lesson. I like, know it's a story. All right. Yeah, this is all nonsense. And I feel like the guy who tells you this story is the drunk guy at the bar who shakes your hand too long. Yeah, which I think is uh, what Billy Joel most likely is. <laughs> <laughs> or he doesn't shake your hand at all which is better which is better, Way gotta, better. i respect it so i gotta save his hands have you had the drunk guy hold your hand too long guy thing? oh yeah Ooh. definitely um i used to hang out in dive bars a lot and play pool and there were guys you know like working class older guys who got there much earlier than me and drank all day and you know if you beat them in pool they wanted to shake your hand and you got you know every variety <laughs> of like too long too wet <laughs> my finger on the wrist oh yeah so, finger on the wrist that's oh. a that's like uh intimidation yeah i guess or pulse taking i don't know what's happening 
That's like so old quicker. time. They miss sometimes. <laughs> it's oh, all bad. I got a, I got a, you know, visceral memory when you said wet. I'm like, oh yeah, that thing where, oh. Yeah, don't miss that. Where you're like, I hope that's sweat. Yeah, is that your foot? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> So then he starts to tell us the story. And why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about this this uh, sad sack and the lady? Yeah, we're gonna come back to a couple of these things. The man's name I don't remember. He was always Joe to me, but I can't forget the woman. She was always Christy Lee. That's weird. Just that that's weird. <laughs> don't tell me that that's odd. She was always Christy Lee. He, uh, yeah, echoes of uh, she's always a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well yeah. <laughs> well, Naturally. Yeah, that's how names work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, he, he was always, jo I don't remember his name, but he was always Joe to me. Yeah. Uh, that, not that, a great nickname. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably his name. <laughs> right, right. Man's name I don't remember. He was always lefty to me. Yeah. That'd be something else. Yeah. Man's name I don't remember. He was always Walter to me. Right. Uh huh. Hey, you remember that guy we used to call Joe? What was his name? Oh, it was Joe. All right. Joe. Uh, oh, Joseph. Oh, it was on the tip of my tongue. I should have known. It's a weird construction but we let it go. He oh. was working in a nightclub. That's where he played the saxophone. He used to fake the stock arrangements. He left the customers alone. I don't know what stock arrangements means in this context. I think it is a musician thing where there are songs you're supposed to know if you're a, uh, like, a, like a session musician or a guy who plays in clubs. And if you don't know them, like I know piano players who are really good at noodling, uh -huh. kind of just fill a thing in. And I, I think that might be what that means. That sounds right. Yeah, I love one of my favorite things because I've been in a lot of bars with musicians because my wife's a singer, you know, and I love watching guys who are good at just noodling. Just yeah. filling. I, uh, for a show once, I thought it would be cool to hire a piano player to noodle behind me. Yeah. And, and was I, it? Huh? <laughs> and was it? I didn't do it because I realized, oh, somebody's going to think I'm trying to be Zach Galifianakis because he does yeah. that. He does that very effectively. And, yeah. And I realized, oh, he already did that, but better version, he plays the piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard to top. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think that's probably because the arrangements, we're talking about musical arrangements. Right. So basically, he didn't learn the stock arrangements. He's just, he's so good. He can just fucking go in there and do it. Yeah. And I like he left the customers alone because I, the implication I think more is he don't want to talk to you. He's yeah. playing saxophone. He's a musician. Yeah, yeah. He's a true artist. And I get that guy. Like, you know, there's comics after the show want to shake everybody's hand. There's comics who are out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Later. yeah. And most of the ones I didn't like the most were uh, the ones who did their set and then waited, went to the bar to see who, who saw them. <laughs> <laughs> um, just wait for compliment, especially after a bad set. Oh, yeah. They sunk up the place, then they go to the bar and they're like, did you see me? Yeah. Ugh, no yeah you can if i have a less than amazing set i'm in my room <laughs> yeah i have an amazing it, set absolutely go dine out on it yeah absolutely yeah i uh or a terrible set you might need the drink <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> this blonde after one of my i had a really good set this blonde came up and talked to me a blonde woman it was very nice and you like when women talk to you and I was, it's kind of nice. And she seemed a little off. And I was like, well, it's nice, so nice to talk to her. And then she gave me a little Bible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I was like, okay. She liked my set. <laughs> I love your set. Here's a little Bible. Because you, you can do some jokes about this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So he left the customers alone and dawns on me that that's a good setup for what happens next. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he's a guy, he just goes in and he does his job. But one night before the last song, about a quarter after three, he saw her standing at the coat rack. I like the reference to the coat rack. It feels a little old timey. And yeah, I have coat check in my lyrics. Oh, sorry, coat check. I have uh, had a shot I can't read. Um, <laughs> he says, Boy, that shot is, that Moderna's doing a lot of work for you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I slept with your sister. Moderna. <laughs> <laughs> he made his move on Christy Lee. And now I did immediately when I was like, is that Christy Lee's Christy Lee Brinkley? Is that her middle name? I was immediately curious. Do and ladies go by that kind of name? Like the two name move? I feel like I don't. You hear the initials once in a while. That's my friend PJ. I feel like, like that, Jean, you'll hear something like that once in a while. Yeah, I feel like it's got a pink lady vibe and I, it works for me in that <laughs> regard. All right. Because I think you're right. I don't think I don't think good girls go by those kind of names. <laughs> that would be Christine. That's right, Christine. You wouldn't be at a coat check at a quarter past three. <laughs> All the bad girls hang out at coat checks and smoke. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's handing out Bibles to the <laughs> saxophone players. <laughs> oh. But that's a good observation, though. No, I don't know that. But I, but I, yeah, I get a pink lady vibe. Yeah. Actually, oh, it works. Yeah. It works. I'm just trying to fill time. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you got to love the chorus. Yeah. Christy Lee, Christy Lee, Christy Lee, Christy Lee. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wonder how much of doing an album that's 50s and 60s style is like takes the pressure off your lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> like, yeah, there were no lyrics back then. <laughs> Just fucking the bird is the word. Yeah. Have you heard about the bird? Great, we're done. <laughs> See you at the studio. Hurry before Elvis gets there. <laughs> oh. Uh, then it gets nice. It gets a little more eloquent. I guess that was all set up for us. Yeah. Uh, then she was a nice piece of music. She had a rhythm all her own. He blew a solo like a blind man. She really dug his saxophone. And a little poetry. Yeah. And some puns. And she was a nice piece of music. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah um forgivable i guess although i don't mind it but she was a nice piece of music she had a rhythm all her own oh see i misread it again that's fine <laughs> <laughs> he blew a solo like a blind man she really dug his saxophone is solo like a blind man uh it's a euphemism is that what we're doing I think it just means that a uh, like reference to all the blind, great blind jazz guys. Yeah. Who played by feel and, uh, or learned by feel and were therefore cooler and better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But within this lyric, is she the saxophone? No, I okay. don't think so. I think the saxophone is doing some Freudian work throughout this song. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, she wanted more than just an encore, and he could play in every key. See, this is all uh, double entendres. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, and the side effects are worse after the second entendre. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he left the stage and packed his alto and took it home with Christy Lee. 
Yeah. The, so the alto at that point, that's just the sax. They're just, he's just letting you know he didn't forget it at the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's important. Yeah, he kept it with him because he, play, you know. He plays like a blind man, but he, uh, <laughs> he still knows where it is, <laughs> takes it with him. Um, then we come to, there actually is a bridge. In oh, this yeah, song. I guess. It's not, it's not that problem that you have where it sounds like an entirely different song. This is pretty much on track with- Yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah, it is. Not a wild change. Yeah, it doesn't suddenly become 78 Billy Joel for a second. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're still in the, uh, still in the neighborhood. So uh, speaking of, you mentioned this earlier, you mentioned the bird. <laughs> Uh, I heard the man knew the bird like the Bible. I'm assuming the bird is her. <laughs> no, the bird is what is the bird? Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. Oh, okay. Now, even if I didn't have the vaccine, I wouldn't have known that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was known as the bird or had a piece. That was his nickname. Okay, that he was the bird Parker. Charlie Parker. There you go. Um, so he knew the bird like the Bible. So he was a, a student of the bird. Yeah. You know, the man could play an educated act. So speaking, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He couldn't see that Christy Lee was a woman who didn't need another lover. All she wanted was the sax. Terrible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible pun. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it works. Yeah. Like if he plays this in concert, everybody goes woo. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, to me, this is the first time I'd heard axe uh, as anything besides a guitar. So it's just any instrument you can refer to as your axe. Yeah. I... So because Billy Joel's a musician and we're not, I'm going to assume that's true, but I've never heard that either. I don't feel like I've heard it, but it makes sense, I guess. It is just your tool. Yeah. Um, it's just a rock with one sharp side. Yeah. <laughs> that you found outside your cave, you lazy fucking caveman. <laughs> but uh, so if I, I can come out and go, I brought my ax and I got a flute. Can I do that? Is that my ex? <laughs> yeah. I'll bet there's a lot of uh, hierarchy that goes on. Like, you can't say ex. That's only, a uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah guitar, bass, saxophone, certainly keyboards. You can't do that. Yeah. Hold on a minute, guys. I got to break down my ex. Those are drums. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my ex is a little sore tonight. I don't know if I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm not a musician so i i guess it makes reason i guess you could kill maybe it's just instruments you could easily kill someone with <laughs> yeah i'll accept that yeah so no harmonica yes on saxophone yeah absolutely piano only if you can get them to put their their head under that part right and just kick out one of the legs yeah so probably not <laughs> piano but Guitar, sure. <laughs> yeah, what a way to go. <laughs> right? <laughs> time, time of, what was the time of death? 1980. <laughs> <laughs> he was grateful for it. He just listened to a bunch of guitar, so he was ready to go. <laughs> he wrote thank you in blood. <laughs> he died. <laughs> oh, um, no. Where are we? It took a while for him to notice. It took a uh, while for him to see. He, oh, I like this lyric. He was never in control here. It was always Christy Lee. I like that lyric a lot. Yeah, that's nice revisiting of always Christy Lee. Yeah. And I can relate to it. I think every person can, not just dudes, ladies, anybody in a relationship. I think yep. we can all relate to going, Oh man, I thought I I thought I had leverage, or you thought whatever. <laughs> right, I thought this was my idea. Nope, 
Yeah. Oh, I thought I was the hunter. It turns out I'm meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the hunter. I'm the ignored. <laughs> um, I was reading about this song and something really made me laugh in the trivia about it, which was that when Christy Brinkley met him, she wasn't sure if his if Joel was his surname or if it was like Billy Joel Johnson or something. <laughs> she thought it was like, uh, yeah, like, like I guess like Billy Joe is a common name. Yeah. She wasn't sure. So I'd like to think that he was making fun of her <laughs> by calling her Christy Lee. <laughs> um, her name could have been why she found it convert confusing because I'm Christy Lee, but I'm... <laughs> Brink is my middle name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, get the Moderna if you can. Yeah. It is fun. <laughs> I'm still getting off that Moderna high. Uh, <laughs> right, I, th I think this is you. After the chorus, the chorus is very similar to the first chorus. Yes. <laughs> For Christy Lee's. Yeah. Oh, the man took a calculated gamble. Yes, the man had the power to perform. But Christy Lee was more than he knew how to handle. She didn't need him as a man. All she wanted was the horn. <laughs> uh, sax was a better joke. Yeah. Horn is a little, no one calls it their horn. No, no, unless, <laughs> unless you have a deformity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, Peroni's disease, I think it's called. <laughs> <laughs> they have something for that now. So now I think what I'm getting here is, uh, I think I get it. I think they have indeed had some awesome sex. Yeah. He's under the impression they're in a relationship. Right. He's hoping that. She is meanwhile doing whatever she wants. Yeah. Which is confusing to him. Because he has complete control over his instrument and no control over this lady. Yeah. And uh, he doesn't understand how that works. Yeah. As we find out, it'll be very devastating to him yeah. <laughs> to not have control. Hey, and by the way, ain't none of us got complete control of our instrument. Thank you. Nobody. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> Metaphorically or literally? No, like if you have a saxophone, that thing's hard to carry around. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Well, some of the valves will get stuck. You can't oh, do anything. Nothing you can do about that. Oh, yes. Sometimes you forget which way to put it back in the case. Yeah, you get a bad read. Yeah. I, used to, I, I don't know that, but uh, I remember high school band kids always had read problems. Yeah. They're always freaking out. They had to go back to their locker and get a new read, and they'd be crying. <laughs> that stupid hat with the chin thing. And oh. Look, the crying's not going to help your already problematic popularity. Already zero percent cool. Yeah. Or actually, maybe then you just let just cry then. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why are you holding back? A friend of mine uh, is a lady who was in band, and mm -hmm. not, I've known lots of dunes in bands who would then go on the dumb band thing, and she said, "Tell you a secret: all the nerds in band that nobody liked, they had more more sex than the cool kids anyway." Oh, for sure. And I was like, I should have got back in the band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love how uh, if you just add an A, it makes the band so much cooler. Oh, I'm in A band. Now you're, <laughs> I'm in band. You're not. <laughs> just a little A. That's a good observation. <laughs> Man, I'm going to get back into stand up. You just, should. So I can, just so I can bomb with that and leave. <laughs> Is that your opener or closer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stretch it to five minutes. Oh, I would enjoy. This might be worth doing once. Get up and go. Your next comic, Alex Bays, you get up and you go. I think it's funny that, and you tell, tell the, go, tell the joke. Just go, yeah, I think it's funny how much work uh, the word A is doing in terms of um, music coolness. What I mean is you say, like, I'm in a band, you're cool. 
I'm in band, no A, no cool. You guys have been great. Exactly. Give it up for Jim Bruce. I, and everybody else is doing a reasonable amount of time, so it makes no sense. Great, it's like a, one of those little sketches on a rap album where you're like, why is there 19 seconds of this <laughs> instead of just the next song? Oh, that's so, oh. it should be on a, look, I'd be great if I was there, but it, it would be even better if it was like right before you is Mulaney. <laughs> <laughs> Mulaney and, doing 40 minutes. And right after you is like Chappelle. <laughs> And then Chappelle's first 25 minutes are about me. Right. She didn't write anything. And they're upsettingly good. Yeah, of course. Even though he's ripping a jewel halfway through every sentence. Right. Fucking genius. I hate you. <laughs> uh, so he's uh, Joe, if that is his real name. No. Um, his, uh, his life is falling apart. He's having a lot of trouble handling Christy Lee. Yeah. Uh, so then we leap forward in time. They say that Joe became a wino. <laughs> they say he always drinks alone. They say he stumbles like a blind man. They say he sold his saxophone. Oh. Now, Joe. Yeah. You uh, ostensibly play the saxophone in these uh, clubs. This is not the first woman you've met. Yeah. It's not the first time it's gone sideways. And you can be a drunk musician. I, I know them. Yeah, you can keep the saxophone. People will buy you drinks. Yeah. I don't think if you play like the sax that's in this song, if somebody played that, I would be like, oh, I'll buy you a drink after this. Yeah. You're not paying for drinks. Why are you selling your saxophone? Yeah, you He's have problems. That's not, that part's not Christy Lee's fault, Joe. Yeah. Joe, you brought some, some of your own issues to this. Yeah. Christy Lee just helped you see what was already going wrong in your life. Yeah. You should be thanking so, her. Yeah, you should be thanking her. Yeah. I don't care for this behavior. Also, you've had a few relationships that were just about sex. Yeah. Huh? Come on, man. It's the 50s. <laughs> uh, even the band must face the music. That's what the moral is to me. The only time you hit the high note is when you play for Christy Lee. Well, that's not true, clearly, from everything else you said in the song. Yeah. Um, is the idea that like once you boned Christy Lee, you have to leave the game <laughs> entirely and become a drunk? That's the high. That's as good as it gets. Yeah. The yeah. only time you hit the high note Ugh. was if there's a backstory that would make sense. Where you know, there's another song where you find out, yeah, he's a great saxophonist, but literally he was a virgin till then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the whole time he was in band. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in a band. Yeah. Oh, no. What a great fucking uh, Black Mirror reveal that would be. Yeah. And then there's a, and then there's all these other songs. You know, he was the guy who carried the symbol. <laughs> and she was the lady who twirled the baton. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them were dressed kind of stupid. But they still managed to get it on. Oh, that's a good lyric I just wrote. This is really good. Let's analyze that. Yeah. <laughs> analyze that, Jim and Alex. There's a show for you, Billy Joel. Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get your revenge, Billy Joel, <laughs> take that song apart. Yeah, because it's done. That's all we wrote. <laughs> that's it. Good luck, stupid. Yeah. Um, I do like that uh, this is what the moral, he, become, he told us he was going to tell us a story, and yeah. then now he's telling us here's what the moral is. Even the band must face the music, which just seems like uh, one of those things that uh, they would paint on a rock and you could buy it at Target. <laughs> uh, it's not great wisdom. Yeah. It's just another pun. 
it is feels like wisdom nonsense yeah yeah and you read but, it the second time you're like oh that's nothing <laughs> that isn't a thing you really just wanted to use your wife's name in a little song and you didn't want to work on it too hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's become clear it is tied up in a lovely bow you're right it does close nicely mm -hmm. um uh there's some good economy in the song that's true there's not yeah. a lot of extra horse shit yeah just the, a lot of sax but it's all great yeah this uh 1983 would that be richie canada or is that the new guy is this mark rivera you could have asked me that as your trivia i could have could but i don't know the answer so it wouldn't work very well <laughs> i'm gonna look it up because uh it is really good sax and we should give props to the right person yeah innocent man saxophonist do your thing bing just kidding i used google <laughs> uh awards background track listing uh, 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 uh it is mark rivera mark good rivera. job bud. mark rivera everybody and it is really good saxophone and uh i guess suck it richie canada <laughs> <laughs> hey that's suck a weird it. thing i i've never entirely understood and i but i guess it just constantly happens that's with music in general the saxophone becomes an instrument ain't nobody interested in hearing yeah it's real weird isn't it yeah talking about that at work like remember because i work with a lot of people who are much younger than me which is you know now most of the world right um and they complain about different things with their music they complain about too much auto-tune uh, or too much breathiness. A lot of the singers now are breathy. Yeah. And, and I will say, like, remember when every song had a saxophone solo? <laughs> go, shut up, old man. That was never real. <laughs> and I go, no, I swear. Yeah. It's good on the good for you, piano, for somehow being the instrument that transcends it all. Yes. Well done, piano. Yeah. But why? Why is it the one that persists? I know it, that's a philosophical question, but it's weird. It really is. Yeah, there are instruments. Uh, you can't just play a song on the saxophone. Mm -mm. Even these guys, you know, there are a lot of guys on street corners here who play the saxophone, but they have a little uh, CD player or something playing the rest of the song. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise, it just sounds like you're sad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there are instruments that run the song and there are instruments that come along for it. Yeah. You, acoustic guitar every now and then makes a mild comeback, but it never makes much of one. No, it has, it knows its place. It, it's always, oh, Justin Timberlake wanted to do this unplugged thing. <laughs> right. Or, oh, we'll put up with Ed Sheeran for two songs. Yeah, and then, then he has to go go be in Star Wars. <laughs> the Star yeah. Wars, one of the Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. He's Darth Vader. Um, or in that movie, he's Darth Vader. <laughs> uh, uh, did you see that movie yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's your review. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, right. it's fine. That's I, cute. I, I find a lot of like uh, songs about that era, like Almost Famous is roughly that era. It's 70s, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I find those movies are almost universally fine. Yeah. I don't know what they're trying to do. I've it's, never it's been blown trying away. trying to make us feel like we were actually there. It doesn't work because we weren't. So I don't know if it's accurate or not. I, maybe if you're older than we are and you were there, yeah. it's good, but then like then it can't possibly compare. Yep. I don't know. I There's think all movies should be set in the future. Yeah. You know, then, um, you don't know if they got it wrong. Do you remember the, so the, I can't think of her name. She's a beautiful actress. She's a little heavy set. And uh, she, Natalie she's Portman. A, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The girl in Bosom Buddies who was a little heavy set. 
<laughs> what? Bosom Buddies, the girl in that movie, in Bosom Buddies, the TV show. Do you remember her? She was that the was second. Joe, second or other. Yes. So there was a Beatles movie about a bunch of teenagers trying to get tickets to see them on Ed Sullivan. Do you remember that movie? Okay. I don't. Uh, it my. I wish I could remember the name of the damn movie, but Moderna. Um, <laughs> But look up that movie. That movie actually nails the trying to make you feel like you were there and it being a good movie. Yeah. Like, okay. Nails it. It's a great film. And, it, and because what they did is they make it about the Beatles, but you never hear a Beatles song. It's great. It's all about them trying to see them. And her character is the star. And at the end, she finally gets to see him and passes out. <laughs> right so she misses it yeah and then they tell her she passed out and she smiles and you realize oh she just wanted to be part of the moment and she's glad that's the part she played it's lovely. <laughs> very, yeah lovely. very nice i will also say that thing you do uh captures the, that era nicely it, by also it, not including music from anybody real yep just one fake song yeah and it ca captures the flavor too of the musicians being frustrated that they they're not getting to do stuff. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, yeah. watching a team fall apart. So again, why didn't Tom Hanks and Burt Reynolds? Why didn't they direct again? I I don't know. Well, Burt Reynolds for obvious reasons. Why wouldn't Tom Hanks direct again? Yeah. He's got time. I guess Maybe. he might. But why didn't Burl Reynolds after the end direct more? I don't know. Isn't that weird? Because he did a great job. Probably that movie was a flop. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he might have been in director jail, as they call it. Okay. Um, and then he might have been like, well, fuck it. I'll go do that Nightshade TV show or whatever it's called. Evening Shade? <laughs> what yeah. was it called? Uh, Night Stalker. He was in Night Stalker. Yeah, he was the Night Stalker. That's right. <laughs> You know what it occurs to me, knowing who he became as far as just a guy who was like, where is it? Where are we filming? Okay, I'll do that movie. Yeah. He probably was like, listen, I make a lot of money. Directing's a lot of work. I don't want to do a lot of work. I did that. They could have been that. It could have been that. I mean, obviously, no one, if he wanted to do something in Hollywood, no one would say no to him. Yeah, because even if they didn't like weren't sure that it would succeed they'd go okay sign on to be in this movie then you direct that one you could do that all day long yeah 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 it's a popular game yeah <laughs> um so uh curious. Do, you talk about what, do you want to talk about how i blew it on trivia <laughs> i do i on do the Paul show so i'll just i'll preface this by saying our friend paul goble has a show called all your favorite game shows it's a fun little show. Alex and I were on once together. Right. And that was fun. And they do a lot of, he does segments from different game shows. And really the whole point is to have funny be people there, kibitz. And, uh, and, and it's fun. And uh, the last one I did, I was, is the, the last segment is trivia. And the last segment time I was on, I won somehow. Fantastic. Which shouldn't happen considering the Moderna. Tell us about what happened with you. Um, I wasn't doing great for most of the game, although I ended up in second place somehow going into the final round, which is just a trivia question in your area of expertise. Yeah. So you, you give Paul your area of expertise beforehand. And he will ask you a trivia question from that. And then mine was Billy Joel lyrics. <laughs> I said, nothing you can ask me will stump me. And he said, um, name the song that this lyric is from. We drown our doubts in dry champagne and soothe our souls with fine cocaine. And I said, oh man, started singing it to myself because that's what you do. You're like, oh, I if I I know how it goes, so if I just sing my way there, I'll find the chorus and I'll know the title. But then, because it's Paul Goebel, he does not stop talking. <laughs> he will repeat the clue, 
And he'll go, do you think you know it? What album do you think it's from? Do you think it's this? I'm like, shut the fuck up. Let me sing my way to the chorus and I'll be right. And that's better for your show if I'm right. Isn't that better than me going, oh no. But I had to go, uh, I, 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 Summer Highland Falls, but it wasn't that. <laughs> and uh, then he said the actual answer and I'm ah, fuck. I was singing my way there. Oh. Oh, and now I can't remember the name of the song. I've Loved These Days, which is a great song that I haven't heard in a very long time. Uh, and it made me want to listen to it, but I'm not ready yet because I'm still mad. Uh, you know what's funny to me too, though? Uh, that couldn't be funnier to me because we're doing this show. Doing this show, which is pointless and frequent. Yes. So I should be <laughs> dialed in to Billy Joel lyrics. We've done 20 songs, 19 songs. 19 songs. Somehow haven't hit that one. We've done more songs too, when you consider just all the songs we've cross-referenced and- Yep, yep, and just listening to stuff between yep. uh, podcasts. We've been thinking a lot about Billy Joel and his lyrics yep. for the last 20 weeks and blank, fully blanked on a, not even, not even a TV game show yep. on Twitch. I embarrassed myself on Twitch where people go to watch other people play video games. Right. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm 55. Oh, that's just hysterical. It's so funny, too, because it makes perfect sense. First of all, you want to, if you're curious, uh, you've listened to our show, you've watched our show. Billy Joel's written a lot of damn songs. It's true. Like yeah. he's written so many songs that, so if I first told you, well, he quit, we're writing songs in the eighties uh, or nineties or whatever he quit. And then you went and looked at how many songs he wrote. You'd go, are you sure? Cause I think he's still been writing a lot of songs. <laughs> Cause he, that's a lot of songs. There's a lot of damn songs. So, of course, there's going to be a lyric you don't get, but it's magical that probably at some point during the show, Paul must have said, oh, and you're doing this thing with our friend Jim Bruce. I'm sure that yeah, happened. Of course. So, it's, so there's a lot of like that thing that happens when you used to play Trivial Pursuit with people when they'd pull the card and they go, oh, this is so easy. And then they'd ask you the question and you didn't know it. Right. That's basically what happened. He's like, oh, this is your, you do a podcast every week, no problem. And then he didn't just give me three words. He gave me two entire lines of the song. <laughs> and so like, Dirk, yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, no. Here's a quick story of the first time I played Trivial Pursuit in my life and didn't know the answer to the question. First time I played it, I played it with my mom, who was at the <laughs> time in her 50s probably some of her friends and they were all in her 50 their 50s and stuff older people and I was uh 14 it's important to the story she asked <laughs> the trivia question and I say what I think it is and they say no and I go ah fuck <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't mean to do that oh it'll do that to you to my mom's credit I was not remotely in trouble. She was amused, so. Yeah, well, you are a funny cusser. <laughs> Probably started early. My, I've told this just to understand who my family was. My father taught me to play poker for actual money when I was like 10. Great. I played with my uncle and my grandpa and my dad and we were playing real poker. People were smoking and drinking, and I was playing poker. God bless. Yep. And look at you now. Super. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what, what do you think these things are? Oh, man, it is a real mess back there. I see, like, tiny pancakes or latkes or something. <laughs> There's caviar inside of a half a golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So it is caviar for sure. What do you think the drink is? Cabernet. Yep. It's uh, <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> Uh, fr a lyric from the song I've loved these days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's, I was going to do a different song. And then I got this uh, message from somebody who watches our show. Oh. Who said, uh, hey, so you, can you tell Alex I am upset with him? Did you see him on Paul's show this week? <laughs> He's joking, by the way. He's not upset with you. Oh, I'm um, all right. <laughs> Either way. It's yeah, he, he didn't know a line from I love these days. Let him know how disappointed I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, isn't that funny? That's so great. It's, it's great that somebody watches both of these things. <laughs> is Wow. <laughs> that is, that is a, a life well lived. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think oh. those are toasts, by the way. I think that's what you have caviar is that are called toasts. Oh, uh, yeah, toasts. And now that I see it, I'm like, because I've never, have you ever tried caviar? Yeah, a couple times. Not much to it. It ain't great. It ain't you know, great. Like, the toasts don't even look like I'd like them. No, they're not great toasts. Cabernet. Yeah, I'll take the Cabernet, I guess. Yeah, the Cabernet I'll have, and then the, the empty, uh, what did you call it? It looks like half a golf ball. Yeah, the empty half a golf ball. <laughs> yeah, that's what they serve it in. I think it's I think it's actually a seashell. I think that's what it is. Oh, okay. I like mine better. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I ever serve ca caviar, it's going to be in half a golf ball. For sure. <laughs> Can't wait. And I'm going to have second shots, buddy. And I'm going to have a, uh, deviled eggs, and those are served in half a tennis ball. Great. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have oh, some trivia for me? I do. I do. I was surprised to hear this. Do you know what was the very first album to be released on CD? Obviously, you know who the performer was. Yeah. When you're talking about it here. But I didn't know it was the first album to be made into a CD and released. It could be, wow, I'm going to say An Innocent Man. It is not that. Okay. Um, yeah, you would think so, because that's about when CDs started happening. That's what I was going, yeah. Right? What was that, 80? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the first album you put out on CD is something that was already out. because you don't want to risk the drop in sales because not everybody has a CD player yet. So you put out 52nd Street oh. from 1978. As you're like, oh, that was the last one that was out. It was selling pretty well. Sales are flagging. Let's see if this helps. That makes sense. You scoop up more sales. Yeah. Oh, son of it a was The first album released on CD. Had no idea. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's a good piece of trivia. That is wild. Yeah, I was shocked. Here's I just, I was literally looking up which one of his albums was first released on CD. Come to learn. Wow. His album was the first. Very cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, right? Wow. Lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Go, you're not going to find that on Twitch. No. Yeah, ask me that question that I just asked myself. I'll know that. Yeah, Paul, <laughs> that is your real name. One of the first CDs I ever bought was Around the World in a Day, which is Prince. Yeah. And I was sort of bummed. I was like, oh, this is too bad. I wish this was still an album because the cover art was so good and it's wasted. Yeah, that was a CD problem. A lot of early CDs. The liner notes. Yep. Yeah. A lot of early shit. a lot of early CDs. It feels like oh, they probably started this artwork thinking this was an album because. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This is a waste. Yeah. A waste. Didn't work. Nope. So I think next week, um, well, we have to talk about I've loved these days. 
<laughs> My <laughs> favorite Billy Joel song. <laughs> See what's going on there. Oh, uh, we really do have to talk about I'd love these days. Oh. I'm loved these days, but not at the moment I'm mad. Isn't that the parenthesis? <laughs> That's not, right. not the song, just the days. <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, that's tremendous. Oh uh, yeah, good times. That is good, good trivia. Time. That's that's legit interesting. That's good. Trivia. Stumbled on it. After 20 weeks of trying to find trivia questions. <laughs> <laughs> stumbled on that. Well, I can't tell you how happy I was to realize, oh, I have something fun to do for the picture. <laughs> I'm so glad it worked out for you. Yeah. Uh, my massive public failure. <laughs> I'll see what I can do for next week, I guess. Well, my pants what, fall down in traffic. Well, here's what I know. I didn't I I will watch it. I regardless of how you did in the trivia, I know you were hilarious in the part that matters. Oh, thank you. Yes, I think I was. Kibitzing is <laughs> that's the only thing about that show that matters is the kibitzing. Yeah, there's plenty of that. Yeah. You know the, the player introductions went over half an hour. Same, same in our show, yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, editing, not a strong suit. Were they worth it like people were being funny the whole time? Because then that's- Yeah. Like yeah, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when he introduced the first guest and was talking to that person for a long time, uh, I started to get nervous because like, oh, I'm going to have to talk for like eight minutes <laughs> about what I'm doing. Like, oh, I'm going to work and coming home. And then once a week, I talk to Jim. <laughs> those are the things I do. Oh, no. I was like, I hope I can fill. <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out. Uh, I can't wait to listen to it. And if you feel obliged to listen to mine, you don't have to. But my show was pretty good, too. Pete. Pete was pretty funny. Pete was oh, pretty Pete funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole show was Tell me his best burn. Huh? He had one great burn on you that you told me about. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He, he for some reason decided to just lay into me whole show and I loved it. It was great. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, you can't know how much I'm enjoying this. Uh, I hope you're enjoying <laughs> I really am. And I hope that you're having fun listening to us do the show because uh, it's been one of the finer, finer parts of uh, this year. And this has been a rough year and this has been a lot of fun. So uh, I hope you guys are still enjoying it. Um, we'll see you next week. <laughs>